welcome back to Between the Pages. It's a special day. Not only are we back at Midtown Comics, but Alan Kistler is back, fresh from WonderCon. Yes. Right? Yes, it was a good time. It was a good time in LA. Oh, excellent. And also, you've been busy. You've just finished a very cool project. Yes, I just finished uh, writing Doctor Who History, which comes out in November and is available for pre-order on Amazon. And it's the whole history of the Doctor Who franchise. Wow, so I'm gonna put a link in the video description and people can get it, like they can pre-order it right now. So I thought so we'd kick off with everyone's favorite segment, comics to film. And we're gonna discuss the Mandarin. I right, got a couple requests for him. Now, Alan, I don't read Iron Man comics because I don't enjoy them as much as the movie. Okay. And I was going through the history of the Mandarin to get ready for this episode, and it was a little bit of a snooze fest. You know, the Mandarin, it's, it's weird because he's known as one of the big Iron Man villains, mm -hmm. but he actually hasn't appeared as often as a lot of other people. In fact, up until a couple of years ago, there was like a decade in between two of his appearances. Wow. Yeah, but I mean, I think that Iron Man doesn't really have a famous rogues gallery so much, right? No. Except for his liquor cabinet, <laughs> his biggest enemy. <laughs> I mean, a lot of, a lot of Iron Man's enemies uh, would fit into either evil communist super agent mm -hmm. or then corporate spy or something. So yes. it, it, it fit into that category. And the Mandarin really stood out as, as a different kind of guy. And, and he's had ups and downs of how well he's been treated or how stereotypical he's been treated. Mm -hmm. Uh, when he first starts off, he's actually kind of cool, where he's a Chinese warlord of sorts, and he's got these rings that are alien technology, but they're so advanced they might as well be magic. And so you've got AKA, this... A.K.A. don't have to explain anything right. to the reader. <laughs> Cla classic Arthur C. Clarke's law. <laughs> That's fantastic. And so, but it, what, what was fun about that uh, is that Iron Man, he's so used to understanding things immediately. He walked into a room, he knows how that guy's tech work, he knows how that guy's tech work. And these rings, he does not get how they work, mm -hmm. how they're controlled, what exactly they're doing. So you really throw Iron Man off his game and you frustrate him, which is very fun. And then on top of that, the Mandarin was also a very physical fighter, where in the early stuff, he, whenever he fought Iron Man, Iron Man just could not beat him. A big thing is, is the Mandarin, one of his rings, he can teleport, right? So yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got getting him then. <laughs> rings that can teleport. He's got rings that let him take over your mind or enter your mind. He can cast illusions. Uh, he's got a variety of weaponry. So he was this great force. But again, uh, you saw him a few times in the early days and he even fought the Avengers. He organized one of the Masters of Evil teams. Mm -hmm. And then he was just gone for a while. And then, sadly, a few times he reappeared again. He was much more Fu Manchu, much more something that, that we feel uncomfortable <laughs> looking at now. Well, something that you and I were talking about right before we shot was that, for some reason, comic book artists have trouble depicting an Asian character. A lot of them do. Yeah, I mean, like, it's really frustrating, actually, that you know, a character's supposed to be Asian, and sometimes you wouldn't even know it. Right. Uh, so, I mean, maybe they were trying to make it more clear, because even today, I think some of the Mandarin art, you're like, is he Asian, is he not Asian? I can't quite tell, you know? Yeah, and, and originally, though, that, that kind of worked, because in the original story that he gives Tony Stark, he's uh, the product of uh, an Asian man, and mm. an English woman. That's like the reverse of Bane, you know, with an English man right. and a South American woman. It's almost so they can kind of like have their cake and eat it too. They can get the diversity without I, going all the way, which I, I don't like that. I don't like watering down a vil an ethnicity of a villain. And it's, uh, I mean, I, or any I, th character. I think it depends just on the character, uh, yeah. you know. But with, with the Mandarin's case, also, you had this whole upbringing of uh, particularly his, his mother being a British aristocrat, mm. that he came to really just dislike governments and authority. Because they took all of his, his fortune, right? Or he, could, oh, he couldn't pay his taxes or something, right? I mean, there, there are different, uh, yeah, one, one major explanation was that they basically took his wealth and his acquired uh, money. And in general, that just developed to a general hatred of the Chinese government that he felt like, you know, this was a prosperous people, this was a proud people, and you kind of screwed it up, didn't you? You should really Like have Gerard Depardieu today. There you right? go. Right, where he was like, screw you, France, don't take my money. And I was like, <laughs> you guys screwed it up. And, and as he has this cult of followers, he doesn't really care about their nationality. He's, all, he's after the conquer the world for, as he sees it, the good of the whole world. He's just better, he would be better in charge of this whole planet. So what your nationality is, really doesn't matter to him. Well, he reminds me a little bit in that respect, in that regard, of Ra's al Ghul. Yes, and, and there are several similarities between yeah. the two. And 
one thing. Uh, Rachel Gould, by the way, is supposed to be Middle Eastern for you movie yes. watchers. <laughs> yes, he's definitely not supposed to be British. No, or, or Irish or, or whatever. Irish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Iron Man comics before the movie, he's never been a big character, right? I mean, the Mandarin. Uh, no, I mean even Iron Man. I mean, oh. you have a character that was not. I mean, the movies are what drive. It's not like Batman. Where it's like, finally the world sees what we love. It, it wasn't like Batman, but he did have some more popularity than, say, you know, it certain other Aquaman. characters. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you know, Iron Man did have some cartoons, and he was someone who would appear in video games, mm -hmm. and he would constantly guest star in some other comics. So it was like, he did have, I wouldn't say he was a C-list character. He was like B-list, where... B-minus, you know, maybe. You know, I think... He, there were, mean, he had his fans, but he definitely, you know, people might know Iron Man, but they didn't know who Tony Stark was. Yeah, I t all I knew about him before the movies was in Toy Fair, when he right. was always drunk. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's why his rogues gallery isn't that well developed, and I think that's why the movie has to kind of like... And, um, well, let's talk about the movie, because sure. it's basically an unrecognizable Mandarin. I mean, one thing that they've immediately done is he's clearly not Asian. Yes. I've heard that the reason for that is they wanted to avoid basically being accused of stereotypes in the film and focus on the fact of, you know what, even in the comics we don't know the Mandarin's true origins, he keeps lying, and so what we've done is we've made him a guy who, like the Mandarin, is obsessed with Genghis Khan and also is obsessed with this, this well, way yeah, of life. Yeah, he definitely has an Asian influence in the movie. Ben right, Kingsley. and he's obsessed with the, the art of war. Mm -hmm. He has the samurai, he has the robe, but I have to say, I think that the, you know, the terrorist is a stereotype at this point as well, you know, the Middle Eastern terrorist. I feel, you know, I've been covering a lot lately, you know, Iron Man 3 is financed partially by DMG, Chi a Chinese production company. They're making a Chinese version of the film. And I think that, I think one could argue that why would you, you don't want to have a Chinese villain at that point. Which, if that is the case, seems really silly to me because I'm like, well... You know, like a different I villain. No, <laughs> oh, I have no problem having an American villain yeah. being an American. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, maybe that's, you know, privilege or something. But uh, I, I think it's it's important to notice that this is a villain and not the representation of a country. And he's never been meant to be the representation of a country. Yeah. Like he he is a villain, and that's his background. Yeah. I mean, he's a. I mean, obviously, I don't think the Chinese government wants to have a villain who says, "We hate you because you took. Uh, I, I hate you because you took all my money." Right. All right. But I mean, I think you could still tweak it. I mean, I just feel that switching these characters over. I mean, at least they didn't switch him to a white actor. But at the same time, uh, you know, he's called the Mandarin. I mean, I don't know. I do like the way Ben Kingsley looks in this film, and this character isn't so well defined that I'm like, oh, you're messing with brilliance. Right. 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 I mean, the the main thing that I don't care for myself is the sunglasses that we'll see in some of the posters. It's very Scarface, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and and that to me, one one thing, while the Mandarin is even in his original appearance is essentially a terrorist cult leader, mm -hmm. he's also kind of in an old world mood. Very I mean, Ra's al Right. And, Very racial cool. <laughs> and I think I think that's a way to, to play with it that's really interesting because you've got this weird old world, new world mix. And here it's like, well, beyond his robe, he is very clearly a modern day terrorist. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I see this... It's an interesting situation. First of all, uh, this to me is, I prefer, this is more racial ghoul than racial ghoul in the Christopher Nolan movies. That's true. You know, I really like this. I think that this is a very powerful character, whereas Rachel Ghoul was really sidelined, I felt. But also, you know, I'm trying to f figure out, I mean, they've done a very good job of hiding a lot of this movie from us. Yeah. But, you know, you have uh, Aldrich Killian uh, and AIM, and you have to wonder who's the real villain of the film. Right. You know, how much is the Mandarin the main villain? Yeah, and I'm very curious about that because his presence has been in the first two movies. Yes, alluded but, to, right? right. So it's, how? It's, what was it? It was the first movie. Was the right in the first movie? The the cult that captures Tony Stark is the Ten Rings, and they were Middle Eastern. So yeah. I guess they were getting ready for that. Movie. But at the same time, Yin Sin said that they were using so many different languages, mm. and so he couldn't tell where some of them actually were from. So you could imagine, okay, this is a cell of a larger group, and this is like the Middle Eastern oh, cell I like that. Okay. of something cool. larger. Well, how about in the second film? Where, the second uh, film, it's much more subtle, uh, but Whiplash, when he gets these fi false documents that lets him enter the, the race track mm -hmm. as, a, as a technician or whatever, those false documents, the person who gives them to him, who is an Asian person, is supposed to be an Asian of the Mandarin. Oh, wow. 
that is like really subtle. Yeah, so that's. <laughs> so basically, if you see an Asian character <laughs> in Iron Man, it's the Mandarin. Or He's maybe not there. at this point. Where I also want to touch on uh, is the space technology. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first hear that, I think that doesn't fit into the world of the Iron Man movies at all. But then we all know that they're going, you know, Marvel Cosmic is huge for them and they have Guardians of the Galaxy. And the rumor is at the end of this movie, Iron Man flies off into space, right? Which is totally possible. And on top of that, we have now pushed the reality of the Iron Man films because we had them in Avengers. And so we showed Iron Man exists in a world where aliens exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where space travel in a non-conventional way it's exists. Yeah. But it's interesting because Ben Kingsley in these photos looks so low tech. Yes. His rings look so low tech. Yeah. You know, he looks like he almost dug them out of a Cracker Jack box. Right. And so, they, I mean, they don't scream alien technology. So, the, but, so part of me wonders, are they going to go there? But then I know that they have to go there. If, it, I mean, I mean, that's that's the thing. Do they? <laughs> well, what? Did, uh, I think you should. I think you should just embrace it and go for broke. Because again, it to me, it's like you don't even, you don't even necessarily have to get into the movie where these rings come from exactly if if you just have they just have to pique tony stark's interest right? right and you have to show that it's a form of technology he's not familiar with mm -hmm. which is really the core of what makes the villain and his fight interesting you know that and what drives tony stark personally you know right exactly well it's like with with batman he's a detective he looks for motives and then you have the joker who is seemingly without motive except chaos so mm -hmm. it makes it an interesting battle because there's there's that frustration of you don't fit with my world. Well, also, that's what Tony Stark respects more than anything, uh, technology. Yeah. I and mean, who does he gravitate towards yeah. in the Avengers? Bruce Banner. Of course. Uh, so I think that that's the kind of motivation that I think could, you know, realistically get his character to go to space. Yeah. You know, otherwise, I think I can see Tony Stark being like, I don't care. But if they're like a technology that no one else has a patent on, he'd be like, I'm on my way.